Hello there! In this lesson, we'll be using watercolours to paint this realistic succulent plant. For paper, we'll be using the 300 GSM watercolour paper. We'll also be using the Montmartre 18 piece premium watercolour paints, an airtight watercolour palette, a number two traditional mop brush, a number four watercolour round, a number two zero Taclon detailer, an eraser, a 6B pencil for the shading, and a blunt HB pencil for the transfer. To start the transfer, use the first outline image that you can find through the link above. Flip it over and shade the back side with a 6B pencil. Once the sheet is shaded, lay it shaded side down onto the paper, tape it into position and use a blunt HB pencil to retrace the outline. It is important not to press too hard or you can indent the paper. Use the second reference image and redraw in the succulent. At this stage, lightly draw in shadow lines, lines to indicate where colours should be separated and any details. Keep the lines flowing. The initial drawing is really important with watercolour. Keep referring to the reference image and lay in any elements you observe to remind you of certain things when it comes to laying in the colour. Once we are happy with the drawing, we can add the paint. As I said before, for this project, I'm using the 18-piece premium watercolours. I lay them all out, except Burnt Umber and Payne's Grey, into an airtight watercolour palette. At this stage, I only have a rough idea of the colours I'll be needing, so it's best to lay out more than not enough. To create realistic watercolours, you have to build up the translucent colours up on top of one another. You also have to start with the lightest colours first, moving to the darker colours. So this first light tone is created from sap green and cerulean blue. This is laid over the entire succulent with a number two traditional mop brush. If you look at the reference image really closely, you will notice that the outer petals have a yellow tint to them. This colour can be mixed with lemon yellow and gambogue. When you lay a wash over an existing wash, if you are quick and don't scrub the wash on, the underlying colour will remain relatively intact and will optically mix well. I don't take the colour into the middle of the succulent as that area will have a bluish tone. Once the washes are bone dry, I create a really watery mix of cadmium red deep and apply it with a number four round brush onto the edge of each petal. I lay this in at this stage basically so I know not to take the green wash into it. The colour mix that is laid in is quite watery and roughly blended out to the rest of the petal. It is best to work petal by petal as the paint is only workable for a few seconds. Refer to the reference image and if any petals are darker then make the tone deeper. Sometimes it is necessary to lay the tone down and let it dry and then lay the same colour over it and darken it that way. You can also speed dry a wash with a hair dryer. Obviously you just have to be careful not to blow the paint across the page when doing this. Once the red is dry, we create a basic green from sap green with a touch of viridian and yellow ochre. I apply the colour to the outside petals first. As I lay this on, I try to create texture by spotting on the colour. I thin out the colour as I move to the edge of the petal and try to keep it out of the red. On pretty much every realistic painting, the light source must be taken into account. In this case, it is emitting from the top, so any of the bottom petals will be in shadow. We don't worry about these areas yet, as it's more important to establish a consistent all over tone first. Next I create a mix of sap green, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue and a touch of dioxazine purple and lay it into the petals. The outer petals receive a thinner layer over them as if it's too thick, the preferred yellow green will be lost. The petals in the centre of the succulent receive a more concentrated mix. Remember to keep any areas in highlight free of too much colour. Again with this colour it is better to build up the tones slowly, allowing them to dry to the touch before laying on more washes of colour. Remember to keep a tissue at the ready in your other hand in case you need to dab up the paint from too heavy an application. Now that the mid-tone washes are in, we can add the dark wash. This wash is mixed from cadmium red deep, ultramarine blue and sap green. I start at the top and lay this into the base of each petal. I try to create texture by more or less dabbing on the tone. I also have to remember that petals are concave, so the edges will be free of tone to suggest this. I create the same mix again in another well of the palette and add a touch of lamp black. 
This colour will lie in the very darkest areas of tone, especially on the underside of the succulent. There is a train of thought that a painter shouldn't use black in a painting, as it's deemed unnatural or can deaden a colour. In reality, there is nothing wrong with using black, provided its addition creates the right colour for the colour you require, and it fits into the tonal range of the painting. If you only add a touch, then the colour will still display some warmth. Students should learn to use black in mixing and washes, and once they are familiar with how it modifies a colour, they can stop using it as a conscious decision. But it's hard to make that informed decision without actually using black. It is this dramatic contrast within a painting that creates interest. The centre of the succulent has the darkest tones in the painting. Following the conventional practice of moving from light to dark means you have to save those darkest tones till last. It also means that sometimes you'll have to go back in and darken certain areas so that the tonal range is consistent. For any detail work, I use the 2-0 Taclon Detailer. This little brush lets you create really intricate work and it has an ergonomic handle so it fits snugly into your fingers. This makes it really good to use for long periods of time. The bottom of the succulent is in shadow and as the leaves have a concave shape, we lay the shadow in so it curves around the petals like this. Add water to the mix so that the dark tone is translucent enough that the underlying colour can be seen. The painting is now coloured and tonally rendered and the last step is to emphasise the red on the tips of the petals. I create a relatively thick mix of cadmium red deep and apply it to the tip and softly blend it out into the lighter wash beneath so the transition is smooth. As well as adding interest, red is the companion colour of green, so they complement one another, and this makes our succulent pop even more. Well, thanks for watching, stay tuned and keep on painting.